so that's done a quick run through on the different Blackmagic software and how to set the stuff up. There's a whole variety of cards and they're adding new ones all the time. If you come to our website, we've got a whole list of them there. Of course, there's also information on the Blackmagic site. And you can see you've got things like the Mini Monitors, Intensity Pros, then you've got these Ultra Studios, and you've got Thunderbolt ones, and you've got USB 3 ones. So there's a card really to suit just about everything. The simplest one is the Mini Monitor. The really nice thing about this is it's under £100, and basically it gives you HDMI and SDI output only. It outputs from 10-bit projects and it outputs from 8-bit projects. You've got a similar kind of thing called the Mini Recorder, which is input. And then you've got the most commonly used card, which is the Intensity Pro. Now the Intensity Pro here does HDMI in and out and has also got component composite and S-video. The major difference between using this and the Mini Monitor, apart from the fact that the Intensity has got analog and it's got ins and it's got outs, is that the Intensity will only output from 8-bit projects whereas the Mini Monitor will do 8-bit and 10-bit projects. The Decklink Studio is a very popular card. It's got HDMI in and out, component, composite and S-video and SDI, so it does just about everything in and out. The next jump up from that is the one that I've been using, which is the 4K Extreme, which has basically got SDI, HDMI and then a breakout cable off here, which does just about everything else. It also does resolutions all the way up to 4K, so it includes 1920, 1080 at 50p, and it's replaced a thing called the Decklink 3D Extreme, which was similar but didn't happen to do 4K. And as you notice, about 600 quid. After the PCIe ones, you then got the USB 3 ones. So there's the Intensity Shuttle, so there's S-Video, Composite, Component and HDMI in and out. This also outputs from 10-bit projects as well as 8-bit projects. The only problem we have with all the USB 3s is they're a bit picky about the USB 3 chipsets that they actually work with. With Edio 6.5 we couldn't use them because they just didn't work on our computers. Now these do work on our computers with Edio 7, but you can't be sure they're going to work on yours because there are so many different USB 3 chipsets and they've only programmed it to work with some of them. Generally it's what's called a Renaissance chipset or it does work on some Intel chipsets but it doesn't work on a lot of others and we've had motherboards with all sorts on. So the USB 3 ones you've got to be a bit careful with because they might not work. And then beyond that, you've got some Thunderbolt ones. So there's a whole variety of Thunderbolt ones. They are changing all the time. The newest one, which has just come out, is this, which is the Thunderbolt 4K, which is the same kind of card that I'm using inside the machine, except it's a nice external breakout with all these connections on it and it connects to your computer via Thunderbolt. Most PCs don't have Thunderbolt on them. Now we are doing some Thunderbolt desktop computers and we also have a Thunderbolt laptop. But unless you've got a Thunderbolt, it's not gonna work. If you have, it's a really nice gizmo. It goes up to 4K and it's a reasonable price. It's only about 600 pounds and it does lots and lots of different resolutions. There's also other variations of Thunderbolt devices. So you have, for example, a Thunderbolt shuttle, again, HDMI, component, S-Video, composite, all in one box. And assuming you have a PC with Thunderbolt on, it's probably going to work. We haven't had much problem with Thunderbolt ones once you've actually got a computer with one on it. The hardware is finding a computer with a Thunderbolt on it. Now these do change all the time, so obviously give us a ring or pop onto the website and have a look at the different ones that are available. Final thing worth mentioning about the Blackmagic cards is of course they do work with lots of other programs. So they work with Vegas and they work with Premiere, they work with Avid. They'll also give you output from a whole variety of different programs. So suppose you're doing your editing in Edius, but you're actually doing lots of effects in After Effects. Well, Blackmagic will give you a preview out of After Effects as well. Because Edius is supporting Blackmagic now, is there any point in buying a Grass Valley card? One thing you don't get with any of the Blackmagic cards is machine control through a serial port. Now the Decklink 4K that I'm using has actually got a serial port on it, but Edius won't use it. If you want to control a machine through RS-422, then you've still got to buy the Grass Valley Storm 3G or the Elite. If you don't need machine control, then you might as well get a Blackmagic card, it'll be cheaper. Blackmagic cards aren't perfect. I mean, they are the cheapest ones around, and we do feel we get slightly more annoying little problems with them than we do with other cards, but mostly they do what they're supposed to. They do what they say on the box. Okay, well, that's gone through using Blackmagic cards with Edia 7 and setting it all up. Hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to email us, sales at dvc.uk.com, or ring us on 01273 205700.